Namaskar and welcome to the Bihar Museum Biennale 2021. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the masterclass to you. This is not really a class. This is actually just an engagement with experts, experts from different fields, from different disciplines, all of whom are connected to Bihar. Some are from Bihar, some are from outside Bihar, some just love Bihar. So this is all about Bihar, India and the world. The masterclass is part of the development of the Bihar Museum Biennale. As I started programming for the Bihar Museum Biennale 2021, so many ideas came from this wonderful state, the wonder that is Bihar. And the masterclass becomes an important aspect of the celebration of museum collections, an initiative which is part of the Bihar Museum. As part of the ongoing discussion on the evolving role of museum as a collective institution, we are exploring contemporary museum as a setting where research towards the preservation and storage of our collective cultural heritage can take place, where concepts of living history are explored and efforts towards knowledge documentation undertaken. As we question how museums of the day are increasingly becoming platforms of dialogue and representation through the Bihar Museum Biennale and the conference Bihar, India and the World, Connecting People, Connecting Cultures, we realized how important the learning component is in creating a thriving ecosystem of cultural knowledge. In the light of this, I have designed a series of masterclasses as part of our virtual programming of the Bihar Museum Biennale 2021, exploring the various facets of arts, performance, literature, film, music, criticism, and history. I'm delighted to introduce our experts and their respective masterclasses. Eva Martinez and Lucia Martinez on the restoration at the Prado National Museum, Madrid, moderated by one of India's leading restorers, Sanjay Dar. The masterclass will be based on an explanation of the different restoration processes and treatments currently being undertaken in the painting restoration workshop of the Prado Museum, Madrid, in Spain. Welcome to the Bihar Museum Binale, the first museum's Binale. The adverse circumstances created by the COVID situation have been turned on its head by the organization of an event like the Bihar Museum Binale. Imagine the opportunity to visit some of the best museums of the country within a span of two days. I'm Sanjay Dhar, an art conservator, moderating a masterclass on conservation with Lucia Martine and Eva Martine of the Prado Museum. The Museo Nacional del Prado is one of the most iconic museums in the world, and the collections are simply phenomenal. My favorites being Guerra's 3rd of May, the Maha Desnuda, uh, Velasquez El Nino, and uh, they also have Bosch, the Garden of Earthly Delight, El Greco, and so, so many other uh, iconic artists, and it must really be a pleasure working there. Today, we have two distinguished conservators from the Prado, sharing their experience of restoration at the Prado Museum. They'll talk about managing important collection and talk about display and specifically conservation of paintings on canvas. The masterclass is going to be ordered. Uh, the Lucia Martinez is a paintings conservator at the Muse, uh, Museo Nacional del Prado. She graduated in geography and history of uh, history with history of art as a major, 
and has studied conservation at the Official School of Conservation and Restoration of Cultural Assets of Madrid. She has participated in restoration of many significant large format paintings at the Prado Museum, particularly the exhibition History of Painting in the 19th Century Spain. She also took part in works in the restoration of works from 19th century, which are part of the collection of uh, the Mu Municipal Museum, Madrid, Congress of Deputies, uh, the Senate Palace, National, and the National Heritage. She was in charge of the restoration of some significant set of paintings that make the Duchess of Valencia legacy in the Prado Museum. <clears throat> she has also been teaching uh, conservation techniques, methodology, and diagnosis as professor at the Higher School of Conservation and Restoration of uh, Madrid between 2000 and 2004. Eva uh, Martinia is a painting restorer at the Museum Nacional. She graduated in art history and has also studied at the Official School of Conservation and Restoration of Cultural Assets uh, of matter. She has worked in various capacities in institutions across the country, history, historia, the Madrid Museum, the Royal Academy of History, the Congress of Deputies, and so many others. She has a rich experience and has worked uh, at the Prado Museum since 2008 and is now uh, part of the permanent staff at the Prado Museum. She's currently working on the restoration of the transfiguration of Giovanni Francesco Penny and has participated in a very interesting project uh, at the National Gallery in London, the Christian portrait of Charles of England by Van Dyke, which was a huge, which is one of the largest paintings in the uh, National Gallery and was the major international collaborative project. So now I hand it over to uh, Lucia and Eva uh, to talk about conservation at Prado. And uh, just uh, note that you can put your questions in the comments and we'll take those questions at the end of the session. Thank you. Uh, hello, good morning to everyone. Uh, this is Lucia Martinez and me, Eva Martinez. We are painting restorers at the Prado Museum and we are so glad to participate in the Bihar Museum Biennale and to give this masterclass. We are going to explain the techniques and procedures which we make at the Prado Museum Painting Restoration uh, Workshop. Uh, we want to stand out that nowadays in the Prado Museum, we are developing some procedures and treatments which we have kept from a more than 100 years old tradition with another one incorporated in the last 40 years and until the present. Uh, today, the work of the uh, restoration workshop of the Prado Museum is possible thanks to a large team which carries out a continual work on the museum's paintings in which the resolution of the different problems keeps the restores up to date and in continual evolution. Uh, the Prada Museum was created in 1819 and the restoration workshop trajectory began a few years later in 1827 with the selection of the first staff. In this selection, among the conditions that a restorer must have, uh, some qualities that are considered essential today are mentioned at that time. Patience, respect, careful care, knowledge of ancient painting, and intelligence. All these features are fully uh, current today. The Prada Museum uh, has its origin in the original collection, and the tradition to have a permanent staff of restorers came also from the original collection. Uh, where there was a group of restorers that began to work in the new Prado Museum since 1819, eight years before the creation of the definitive workshop. 
uh, the conservation studios depend directly on the assistant director for conservation and research in the same way as the curator departments depend on him. Uh, there are four conservation studios for painting, sculpture, paper, and frames. All of them working together with the technical department and the chemical laboratory where we can request different images or tests like ultraviolet, infrared, X-rays, or an, uh, pigment analysis and varnishes. The largest of the studios is that of painting conservation. There are 12 permanent conservators working on paintings, but usually we have different, we have different interns or scholar, scholarships holders working with us. There are different motives for a painting to come to the restoration workshop. For instance, a poor state of conservation in storage to improve it, its appearance for a temporary exhibition or simply for research. In a treatment at the Prado Conservation Workshop, the most important is to manage to recover the communication between the work and the viewer. The relationship with the curators and technical department is very important. Our interest is to discover how the painting works to transmit its emotional content and knowledge. Uh, first of all, I'm going to speak about oil painting uh, since 16th to 18th century. The paintings uh, belong, uh, belonging to Prado Museum have mostly a good conservation condition because it's a very homogeneous collection that has been cared and maintained with great dedication over the centuries. However, it's evident that paintings always uh, suffer damages due to, to its history and its movements the pass of the time and its aging or their technical conditions. The conservation condition of a painting uh, is a consequence both of its, of its own history and especially of the interventions that all restorers made on it. It should not to be forgotten that in the past the paintings were subject to frequent movements. In many cases, they were painted in Flanders, Italy or North, North Europe and they traveled to Spain. On the other hand, at the royal palaces, they were frequently moved between different buildings and rooms. This fact implied manipulations and changes in the conditions of the environment, which have made alteration, alterations in the paintings. Finally, these damages led to all restoring interventions that in many occasions have made new damages in the paintings. So, many of the problems that we find today are the result of not entirely suitable interventions. Uh, though, on the other hand, we must not forget either that on many occasions, these interventions have allowed the paintings to reach us. Nowadays, Prado Museum paintings are generally in optimal conditions, but Restoration Workshop makes a daily work for the conservation of the collection because we need not only to look out the conservation conditions, but to restore the paintings which need intervention because of its fragility or because they haven't been restored since a lot of years. Especially the paintings stored in warehouse or deposited in institutions out of the Prado Museum. It is for this reason that Prado Museum Restoration Workshop remains an active workshop in which the intervention activity is continual. Now we are going to see some of the most frequent damages and problems that the, the paintings of the collection usually have. The crackle is one of the most frequent of the damages present in a painting. Uh, it appears when the painting layer is broken for the movements in the support, both canvas or, or wood panel, uh, even when the cracking rises, there is a danger of falling in the paint layer. This is another example. And this is uh, another example. This is a specific example of crackled uh, colored spider web, typical of the 18th century painting. And this is another example associated with the technique. In this case, the crackle came from the ground layer. 
uh, once the crackle has been produced, sometimes the paint layer rises, and so we can find flecking in the painting. This is an example of a flake in the paint layer. And this is another example of a flake in the paint layer. Uh, this is another one. And when the flakes rise from the support and lose their adhesion, they fell off and originate a loss, as we can see in this example. This is an extra example with a very numerous uh, losses, not frequent in the Brado collection. This damage has been produced by a very aggressive event, like a filet uh, lining or an accidental fat like fire or high humidity. Sometimes the paint layer has very small fissures originated by the contractions of the boot panel. This damage is not very visible, but very dangerous because can make painting unstable and make impossible to have applied humidity. Uh, these are negative results of another dangerous techniques, the transfer or marouflage. This method is very old and anybody use it nowadays. But in the past, it has made a lot of damages in several paintings. The paintings originally was made on wood panel and they were transferred to canvas with a loss of damages originated in this process. Sometimes we find abrasions and wear on the painting uh, surface directly caused uh, by human action. This alteration is generally due to improper cleaning with abrasive or very aggressive materials that have led to the uh, disappearance of part of the painting. Another problem are the overpaintings carried out in previous interventions to cover the old doses. The problem with the overpaintings appears when with the aging, they become very evident because the color changes and becomes very different from the original color. In addition, these overpaintings often do not stick to the loss and overpaces the original painting. Here we can see how the overpaintings has been removed and the old doses appear. Another disturbance in the paintings, in the paintings uh, are the dirt and oxidation of the varnish. The presence of dirt and oxidized varnish it changes highly the appearance of the paintings, not only because of the change uh, in the appearance of the colors, everything turns greenish, yellowish, and brown tones, but also because the loss of transparency and the presence of an opaque and dark coat over the painting impedes to look the depth and the space on the composition. We can see either the, uh, the quality or the final touches the light reflections or the contrast between light and dark. With the dirt, we can see anything of that. Now, I am going to explain briefly the restoration treatments that we carry out in the paintings uh, which need it. The first treatment is the fixing. It consists of the attachment on the paint layer when he has detached from its, its support. We usually use the Frank's animal glue and other as adhesive material. Or in other occasions, we use Italian coletta, which has more gluing capacity. We use a small, a small irons to make pressure and apply a little bit of temperature on the surface to flat and glue the paint layer. Or we can also use the wheeler spatula for the small sizes. We use also these, uh, 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 these aluminum sheets to make an adequate support under the canvas to let make pressure on the paint layer. Uh, these aluminum sheets can be introduced in the space between the canvas and the stretcher. We also use uh, these wood panels put under the canvas to compensate the stretcher height and the possibility to possibility make pressure on the canvas uh, and on the paint line. We use a special type of paper called modern span or silky paper to protect the painting surface. And we also use the Melinex film as an uh, intermediate coat between the paper painting and the iron. We glue the paper on the surface with the Lefranc glue and make pressure with the iron sli uh, slightly heated. 
This is an example of the fixing rhythm in a big size, in a big size painting. After the fixing, the paper is removed with warm water. If we cannot use blue dissolving water, such as uh, the front blue, because the painting doesn't support humidity, we can use uh, also blues that are not dissolved in water, but in alcohols, such uh, as Clusol G or Aquasol. We, uh, we use natural stucco made with the front blue and gesso to refill the paint layer losses and to level the step provocated by the loss. Uh, this is an example of the appliance of the stucco. One of the most important treatments in the painting restoration is the cleaning. Usually, we make an initial cleaning of the pollution deposited on the surface with a system based on the use of water. One of these methods is the use of a solution of triammonium citrate in distilled water in 2%. We can also use another aqua solutions based in the researches made by Delaware University. After the pollution cleaning, we used to remove the old vernis and the overpaintings, and for this treatment, we need to use organic solvents. One of the most frequent solvents mix we use is ethanol absolute and shell salt tea in different proportions depending on the polarity we need. In the last years, we have begun to use the silicon solvents D2, D4, and D5. This kind of solvents are very useful when we have a surface with sensitivity to water because we can apply the solvent on the surface before the aqua is cleaning and the surface becomes protected from water during a, during a time. Also, we can mix them with another solvents to make cleaning mixes or mixes or cleaning emulsions. We have also begun to use the silicon gels. Uh, because it's just allowed to use water as cleaning agent on surfaces with sensibility to water. It's the same case uh, as the, sol uh, the silicon uh, solvents. Uh, we have also another materials to make gels with water or with solvents when we need a gelificated system to protect the surface or to increase the effectivity of the solvents. This is an example of cleaning uh, with vernis removing. This is uh, another example. This is another one uh, where we can see the difference of the color between the clean uh, area and the dark area. And this is another example when uh, we can see how uh, we remove the old areas and the other paintings. After the cleaning, uh, we need to apply a vernis on the painting surface. We always use the Darmar vernis uh, for several reasons. Uh, it is perfectly removable. Uh, it is the vernis that gets a better separation of the colors. It has an adequate shining, and we know it will have a good uh, aging in a time of uh, 100 years because we have the optimal situation of lighting and atmospheric, uh, atmospherical conditions. After the burnishing, we need to retouch the painting doses to recover the original and adequate Im image of the painting. We use pigments with different resins, especially formulated for restoring use. One of the most frequent materials used in the retouch are the mimeric colors made with mastic resin. More recently, we are using also gambling colors with make an aldehydic resin. This is an example of the retouching work. We try uh, the loses disappear uh, for the weaver, but uh, we use a very small network of liners and dots to differentiate the retouch from the original painting. This is the result of the retouching, and this is uh, another example of the retouching work. Among the more than 8,000 paintings that the Prado Museum houses, almost 3,000 belong to the 19th century. Due to the historical circumstances, since the museum opened to the public in 1819, a large number of paintings entered because of the national exhibition organized by the government to promote the work of young artists. Many of these works were large format, about 15 square meter. The lack of space to store them forced their deposit in other institutions. Some of them were Keep kept in rollers. An important task. An important task 
carried out in recent years has been to recover these paintings for public display. As you can see in these images, this is the case of the Blessing of the Fields, painted by Salvador Vinegra in 1887. Here is the process of um, dismounting the painting from the roll. And here is the consolidation. To move this, this uh, to work in these uh, big paintings means a complex restoration process and delicate handling. And this space we have in the rest the space we have in the restoration workshop and the size of the elevator. As you can see here, the elevator is this one, allows us to transfer the painting in the stretcher, but sometimes the final assembly has to be carried out in the same showroom, as you see here. Nineteenth-century paintings has different materials and techniques from those of ancient painting art, and this requires a certain specialization in the restoration. In Spain, from the first third of the century, artists were able to purchase commercial materials. In earlier times, the materials were manufactured by the artists themselves or their assistants. In this way, colors were sold in lead cubes and most of them were modern pigments manu manufactured synthetically. They were much more finely ground than the early colors were when prepared by the artists themselves. They had strong, stronger color powder and were more playable due to the additives included to make them easier to apply. These modern colors had less grain and this made the brush stroke more expressive and fluid. In addition, uh, with the development of the chemical industry in the 19th century came new pigments that were an improvement over the traditional ones. Close to the end of the century, the artist's technique became more and more direct without much mixing of colors, using them almost straight from the tube, thick or diluted with turpentine. Respect techniques and material used specifically in 19th century paintings the support most often used is linen canvas, which the artist by already prepared to be used. Were both in rolls that could be cut and mounted in stretcher bars. This canvas had premium layers that had been applied by hand on a large format stretchers. It was greasy and made mainly of lead white, calcium carbonate and boiled linseed oil. In the Spanish painting practice during the 19th century, certain painters as, as Velázquez or Goya were considered ultimate masters because they resolved many pictorial issues. In their work, there was a constant process of simplification of, in his brush strokes building at once color and line. Before that, the Victoria tradition, in the Victoria tradition, a painting was built in stages using glazes made of thin and transparent colors. The work exhibited or, exhibited or stored in the Prado since the museum opened in 1819 19, have remained stable despite the fact that the modern air conditioner was not installed, installed until the early 80s of the 20th century. Those that were deposited early are the ones that have suffered the most with manipulations, transfers, and changes in their environmental conditions, which have inevitable caused damages. This is the case of this painting called The Return of the Lost Doctor, painted by Luis García San Pedro five years before the end of the 19th century. Its measurements for 0.45 meters long complicate very much the treatment. During many years, the only image we have of this work was this in black and white. This is a good example of the consequences of a long storage period in a roller that initially consisted of wooden slats. You can see here the wooden slats. 
without the necessary rigidity to avoid the formation of the fabric of the canvas. Fortunately, today we have sufficient technical means with rigid, rigid tubes that are stored suspended inside a closet. We start the restoration process with the painting covered with a paper. It was done 31 years ago, long enough for the glue to be yellow and crystallize. Despite this, the stability of the painting made it possible to remove the paper and the glue without difficulty. Um, this image gives us the idea of the scope of the problem, big deformation on the canvas. Also, the protective Japanese paper designed to hold the pictorial layer has turned out to be a factor of deterioration because an excessively strong glue was used and the joints of the paper were deeply marked in the painting, causing even alteration of the varnish in the joints of the paper. This kind of alteration blankets. Thank you. When removing the paper, the first surface cleaning was also carried out. But it remained a severely deformed canvas with deep plastic memory. Resolving these marks took us effort and dedication because it, it, made us, as, it made us see once again that traditional restoration techniques are still effective and allow us to solve problems as, it, as if we were using a modern suction table. To fix the color and eliminate the marks, the tension of the cotton fiber paper has been used. Once the painting problems had been resolved, it was necessary to reassemble the canvas on the stretcher. For this, tension band bands adhered adhere with viva film were, were placed. Making a stretcher of this dimension is complex. It has to be strong allow and allow to the meter to open by tightening the witches. The future stability of the canvas depends on this. The mounting of the canvas was done with the reverse side in side. The cleaning of the painting had to place each figure in the space and above all recover the scenographic sense of the painting and, and its excessive, excessive theatrality achieved with lighting that, that is as hard as an artificial. Another painting that is eight meters long is the one made by Sanchez Barbudo that represents the last scene of Hamlet. It had a severe paint loses due to the time it was stored in a roller leaning on a damp ground. Fortunately, paintings with a long-standing conservation problems can be recovered as we can see in this image. Once the support problems were resolved, it was necessary to restore the loses Filling the empty spot of the lost paint with traditional stucco. The original texture has been reproduced so that the light affects the filler as the painted wanted. This work before retouching is very necessary to recover the subtleties of light. In this enlarged area, we see the challenge. The color has been applied by making a delicate network of barely visible dots or lines. We have used stable and reversible varnish color special made for restoration. Here we can see, you can see more details of the reconstruction work. And another one. In this painting by Gutierre de la Vega, representing a Spanish medieval queen, Changes of the environmental condition have produced deep cracks, which have been marked on the back of the fabric. This kind of cracking is frequent in 18th century paintings, such as these from Goya. The consolidation of the, consolidation of the paint pictorial layer is done with the traditional methods that my colleague Eva already explained. It was important to minimize the cracking to resolve, to recover details such as the shine of the pearl or the golden reflection of the embroidery. 
The best way to prevent them from coming out again is to place a foam cardboard on the back of to limit contact with humidity. A part of the alterations caused by the passage of time, the intervention carried out by unqualified people have been more damaging, such as such is the case of this work done in 1892 by a woman, a woman named Elena Brockman. So a part of the alteration caused by the passing of the passage of time, the intervention carried out by unqualified people have been more damaging, such as the case of this work done in, the, in 1892 by a woman, a woman painter, a call Elena Brockman. In the image of the reverse, we can see the tears in the fabric caused by impacts. In the past, were repaired. This moment. In the past, were repaired with patches of various kinds, including paper. They were attached with organic glue and wax. Even the thin paper touch was tightening the fabric, getting marked on the painting layer. Here is how the, 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 the paper patches tighten the, the canvas. Currently, to repair the tears, we are using linen threads bonded with flour, past and rabbit glue, creating an irregular structure so that it is not appreciated in the painting layer. In the past, this type of deformation was solved with a process called lining, which consists in a joint, in joint a new fabric to the original canvas with an adhesive made essentially, as I mentioned before, with flour and glue. Today, we resolve this type of problems by placing tension bonds with a support canvas that it's not glue. This canvas is made with synthetic fibers. This is the support canvas. So the reverse protection is very good. In this image, we can see the work process during the cleaning of the varnish. Yellow, due to the oxidation with the passage of time, was important to recover the correct position of, of the background, its contrast and its saturation to recover the ephemeral vision of the space and the atmospheric background. The cleaning process changes the artistic reading of the painting and allow us to recover the original image. We would like to finish our talk mentioning the important work of French restoration. The main criteria at the Prado is to reconstruct the luces with the same techniques and materials as the original frames are made, except for the reconstruction of the lost elements. In that case, we use epoxy resin because it is less able to drop off and more stable. Fine gold leaf is used to reconstruct losses. Removing glitter overcoats is also important, this kind of overcoats. In order to reconstruct the golden elements with traditional techniques. Thank you very much for your attention. It's been a pleasure to explain our everyday work at the Prado Museum Restoration Workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia and Eva. It was a pleasure going through all these. Uh, the works that you have been showing, the slides have been fantastic. And uh, it's really, really interesting to see the work that's been done, uh, being done at your, in your laboratories. I had a few questions. 
uh, one was that I really liked what uh, the way you described the conservation, which is uh, restoring the relationship between the painting and the viewer. Can you can you elaborate? Is that a policy? How, how do you look at that? Uh, yes, uh, we understand that uh, the paintings are um, with, uh, with a certain life. I mean, and uh, the the challenge of the restorer is to connect the communication of in, 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 uh, between the, the painting and the viewer, and this is important. Um, unfortunately, time and deterioration uh, make this communication uh, plenty of noises and plenty of disturbation. And we, uh, our intervention, uh, the, 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 the scope of the intervention is to make it clear, to recover the, 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 the clear, the voice of the painting and the painter. Uh, and, 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 and the, the way to, that connects with the, the viewer, that is the, the, viewer, the viewer from today and from what, uh, whenever, no? is, is the, because we are humans and the paintings are enjoyed by, by humans and, and we have a, a certain connection in between our, all our minds. And this is the, 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 the very, very, uh, principal is called challenge on, on a restoration process. I, uh, you know, uh, your stores, they've, they've been there for so many years. So, um, in terms of what are the conditions of your stores? How do you manage your stores? Uh, because some of these paintings are obviously coming after so many years. For restoration. So, uh, how much of it is happening in the stores? How do you manage your stores? And given that it is historical, you know, uh, you have uh, records perhaps for 200 years of uh, storing a painting. So, that must be very interesting when it comes out uh, to your laboratory to look at the physical history of the painting. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, now uh, we have a, a very big <laughs> warehouse in optimal conditions. Uh, we have a new warehouse since the last 20 years, more or less. Uh, and nowadays, uh, the um, working of this warehouse is uh, optimal. We can see uh, uh, the, the state of conservation of the paintings. We have a system of, uh, how say that? Oh, uh, slide. Uh, uh, and the slide system okay. to see uh, the, the, the paintings and uh, the environment conditions conditions are uh, the, the same that in the rooms and in the in the workshop. Uh, in the past, this condition uh, weren't so optimal. Uh, we have paintings stored uh, since uh, 200 years or 100 years. And uh, the alterations produced in, in, in these years are the same that they have now in the, in the optimal conditions. So when we have uh, to um, take out a painting from the warehouse, we have to see uh, what is uh, its conservation uh, conditions. And uh, if uh, the conservation is not optimal and this painting, for example, has to be shown in an exhibition, it's necessary to restore uh, it because the conditions are not the uh, optimal to, to the exhibition. Um, uh, most of these, the, 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 the big paintings uh, we saw you, um, because of the history, of the recent history, uh, they were because of the size of the painting, so, so big that it's not easy to, to store and this. Uh, uh, normally they were Mm, they were uh, ruled because it's the, the, the most efficient mm -hmm. in the past. But not uh, now we're still doing this process because mm -hmm. if you do it in, uh, in optimal condition, this is the, the correct way to, 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 to preserve a painting. Much more better with a stretcher that it, it has no space. No. Mm -hmm. But in the past, these paintings were not as well as we do now. And, and you, you have been the consequences of this, this kind of. of of the storage. 
do you have uh, any um, in terms of moving from the old system of storage to the new system which is uh, temperature managed and humidity managed so uh, in that in that transition in taking them from the old to the new what is the experience uh, how have the paintings behaved uh, in that we have to, first first of all we have to say that we are we live in madrid and we have a very lucky conditions because madrid is a very dry city mm -hmm. so the, the general atmosphere of Madrid is very convenient for a painting. So paintings with no uh, any um, any atmosphere control are yes. in a good condition. Mm -hmm. Probably is when painting came from other areas of Spain with not as good as as not mm -hmm. as, as dry climate as Madrid. So for the paintings that were in the Prado, uh, they, they, they they are stable and they are okay, even though they they they. The air condition is very recent, as I said. No? Uh, we have always problems, and we have most problems when the painting came from other areas. That's the problem. But for the painting that stay at the Prado, during the, all the history of the Prado, they, they have been keep very stable. So we, we didn't have in the we are talking uh, almost 200 years ago. So in these two, that's 200. Almost there were no problems because of atmospheric condition in the collection, which was in Madrid at the Prado. So, um, but now you have shifted to a controlled uh, climate, controlled uh, environment for your storage. Yes, mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, the, the, so the, the challenge today is because this city is coming more dry and dry with the passing of the time. So the challenge is that we need at the Prado a uh, higher humidity than is outside, especially mm -hmm. in summer. So in summer we have uh, outside levels of uh, 15%, 20%, and we need here the Prado 55, 53, 52, 50, 50% 50 humidity. So uh, our problem is the contrary. We need to give <laughs> humidity to the atmosphere rather than take off. Maybe you in India, you probably have the contrary. <laughs> It's the opposite. opposite. Uh, I also noticed that uh, uh, your uh, interventions, you have both traditional and uh, modern systems. So mm -hmm. uh, you're doing both the cola and uh, uh, the earlier ones, uh, systems of using rapid glue and uh, Cola de Bue, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you are also using completely uh, uh, the latest materials also. So what, are, what sort of uh, decision-making process goes into that? How, how are you sort of deciding where, uh, to do a traditional, say, approach or to do a very, very modern approach? Is it dependent on uh, the time frame of the painting, or is it dependent on the previous restoration? Uh, not really. The, the timing of the painting is not something that the, the, what determinate the the method. Uh, the, the only uh, the criteria really is uh, the, the needs of the of the painting. Um, now we, we use more traditional techniques and materials than modern. That is that here at the Prado is uh, that uh, we have. Um, in general, we have the same techniques and the same materials in the paintings from 16th to 18th century are the same. The uh, kind of fabric are more or less the same. The uh, pigments are the same. So we don't need uh, different materials or techniques uh, for one or another one. Uh, now the, the new materials uh, that we are, if we are incorporating are especially the cleaning, the cleaning materials, because we have a, a problem uh, initially the, the solvents in the future is possible we, we can't uh, to, to buy them because they, they are going to be 
uh, forbidden, forbidden for, for, for their toxic, toxicity, <laughs> for, for the toxicity. toxicity. So we have to research, uh, to look for another uh, uh, materials uh, we, we uh, can use. Uh, one of the most important uh, systems in this in this way is the water, the, the, the aqueous systems, because the aqueous systems are optimal for the for the health <laughs> and for the environment. And, and we are looking for uh, this, uh, this systems uh, more for the, the external <laughs> motives, uh, the external conditions than the painting conditions. Uh, always, uh, of course, we, we use uh, materials uh, adequate for the paintings, uh, not aggressive, uh, 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 removable, and so on. But now uh, we have to, to look for uh, materials adequate for uh, our health and for the uh, environment. Uh, environment. And the, the changes really uh, uh, are moved by this this question more than the benefits uh, of the painting. And, and uh, it's also a challenge for uh, us restorers that we we were working uh, following a tradition uh, uh, started by uh, the ones who preceded us because um, the restorer workshop uh, was open almost 200 years ago. So we, 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 we take their traditions and we continue them until now that we have problems because of the Union Europea, the Union Europea normative uh, is going to forbid uh, the use of certain chemicals and some of them are the ones we use. So we, we, we need to change, uh, to change our procedure because of that. And, and we have to say that um, we have good experience with these new solvents, so they are uh, they are very useful, um, and uh, uh, we are adapting our the way we do the process because we try to do the cleaning process and doing at the same time all the all the painting, not doing little pieces because mm -hmm. we need uh, to connect with the painting to understand the problems of the painting, how they how the light works, how the spaces is created, how the uh, background is, mm -hmm. what is, 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 is the painter telling us with, the, with this painting. And uh, um, working with liquid solvents help us to, 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 do, to go on with the process uh, uh, at the same time in all the painting. So we, it, the challenge for us now is to readapt our techniques with these new, new solvents. So, uh, I suppose you have uh, shifted to the uh, modular cleaning system and uh, the Volbers <coughs> uh, uh, gel. Mm -hmm. basis. You're using both. Uh, the, you're using the modular cleaning system uh, program, or mm -hmm. the, uh, what? Uh, we are using. We are using generally the. the the Wolver's formulations okay. yes, for, okay. for the, 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 okay. the, the, the and we, we mainly use his his uh, yes we, we have used uh, gels made with carbopol and solvents um, okay. formulated by Wolver's and now where uh, we are incorporating the, the new solvents of silicon uh, uh, and the silicon gels. Okay. Uh, which are the, the last investigations of the last research made by Wolvers uh, and in this and even in this way of the silicon and the emulsions uh, and the uh, aqua systems uh, uh, emulsion with uh, silicon gels or uh, with a pemolen, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. this kind of, of materials, materials mm -hmm. they are because we, we use uh, the Carbopol gel from, formulated by Wolvers since the last 80s, 90s. Mm. But uh, yeah. all, the, all these kind of gels formulated with carbopol. But now we are opening to, to uh, Premolen or Santan or mm. other kind of uh, materials to, to make gels, yes. gelified solvents. It's really interesting to see how the movement from 
uh, organic solvents to non-organic to water-based mm -hmm. is happening, uh, and uh, particularly conservators of uh, not perhaps so much for Eva but for Lucia and me. Uh, that trans uh, that change has been you know one is getting used <laughs> used to the new system. Okay. Are you teaching it also in your schools now? Are the new system, uh, the new cleaning system, yes, yes, part yes. of the curriculum, or uh, already, or are they being taught separately? No, yeah, we uh, we were lucky because uh, Richard Walters came here uh, like two years ago, mm -hmm. three, three, three years, years ago, ago and, okay. and he explained us the latest advances. advances. And uh, even so he, he came to the Prado, he was working with us for 10 days, only for, with us. But he also came to other institutions in Spain and to explain his methodology. And I, as we know, nowadays the, the schools of restoration in Spain uh, have introduced this practice on the, on the uh, teaching uh, process. Uh, now, um, the next, I think, question would be about retouching uh, in terms of you shifted to My Mary is there, then you shifted to Gambelin, mm -hmm. and in terms, of, in terms of your, how you integrate it, are you, are you using chromatic selection or uh, what a, what approach do you have a specific approach for most paintings or you, do you uh, is there a sort of you is there a policy in terms of retouching uh, that the museum has uh, or do you prefer say chromatic selection or um, uh, or any of these other techniques uh, we understand that a, a painting museum uh, with this, as the Prado, with the master, is an experience of beauty. So uh, we know that the paintings have problems conservation, but the, the viewer doesn't need to know about that unless he wants it. So uh, the retouching cannot be so evident to disturb the message of the the main message of the painting because we are not dealing with archaeological object we are dealing with painting with which main complaint is the beauty uh, so uh, we uh, we do the retouching in a way that is um, you, you need to, be, to to go very close to the painting to to see it but you have because uh, this information about the state of conservation, you, can, you have other supports to show the viewer this information through photography or through whoever. So when you go to the Prado, uh, all the paintings need to, 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 to talk with the viewer, uh, telling that, them the experience of the beauty. So that's why um, we try to do a very... Uh, network of dots on lines very small very very not easy to 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 see, see in a in a in a normal distance uh Eva, i wanted uh, i think we are almost running out of time i just wanted to ask you uh, you have large paintings in prado and then you uh, went to National Gallery to do the big painting. So, how, in terms of your experience, how was it? I saw the, I've seen the, the video of it. <coughs> now I'll try and look for you <laughs> in the video. But, uh, but uh, did you uh, sort of? I know that there are some differences in the way uh, the paintings were done in the past and perhaps the way your paintings have been done in the past, but uh, is there some um, uh, something that you particularly thought was different? 
el conocimiento que tiene el ser humano es tan Y es que hay una muy evidente diferencia. The, uh, the treatment we made at the National Gallery was a lining, uh, a new lining, because this painting of uh, Van Dyck and Dyck uh, was lined uh, three, for, three occasions, three or four. four. Mm -hmm. It was its uh, five uh, lining, lining, lining process. Lining process. Uh, of these uh, linings were made with uh, resin, uh, resin wax, uh, and the last uh, was made with Viva, with Viva um, 371, I think. Um, this, this painting, uh, lined previously with uh, was resin, uh, necessarily has to be relined with, with another What's uh, what's uh, what's um, material? Like, it's grazing, impossible. Grazing, grazing, it's right? impossible to use something at apples. So uh, we understand in this case it's, it's uh, um, necessary to use the, the viva. Um, here in the Prado, uh, this this procedure, uh, procedure of the wax resin is not used. In, uh, it's, it's very, very, very strange because because as because, we say because mm -hmm. we, we live in a dry mm -hmm. city and we yes. in a dry we have a this disadvantage, <laughs> and, and so, we, uh, all the the paintings we have lined here in the Prado are lined with a uh, cola pasta with uh, we call gacha. It's a, a mix of flour, no? uh, uh, glue, um, honey, uh -huh. and little bit honey, coleta. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Coleta. Uh, I have uh, I have line paintings with I've I've done coleta. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so uh, you also have been following the work of the Night Watch, uh, mm -hmm. Rembrandt's Night Watch, which was also a wax lining. Yes. I I think and it has a similar two three uh, two three times it has been lined by wax. By the way, do you also use uh, coal lining ever? Mm. Cold uh, lining. What means that? Sorry. Uh, uh, do you use coal lining? Uh, uh, Fred, Fred, uh, huh. the what coal lining mean? with uh, plexiton. Ah uh, no, uh, no, no, we, no, no. Uh, we, we really because in the. Prado's tradition, uh, the, the, the tradition uh, the, our, in our collection is a very high quality a, a flower past lining. Mm -hmm. So we have a gorgeous experience with uh, this mm -hmm. kind of adhesive. We have, uh, we can see that uh, line, lines, yes. ma lines made we, we, we 400 have, years ago. Yes, and they are, they are perfect. perfect. So mm -hmm. why to try another thing if we, our climate is appropriate Mm -hmm. And uh, the tradition indicates that this is a good system. So mm -hmm. we are a we are a little bit we refuse a little bit this kind of uh, we maybe we if in that in the case that painting is going to be in a very damp atmosphere or whoever maybe we use it. But uh, mm -hmm. in the condition we actually have and which are more frequent for us. It has, it's not mm -hmm. worth it. Now, in any way, uh, we don't make a, line, a lining. Right. It is not extremely mm -hmm. necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, as, as I said, we prefer to put a canvas, just mm -hmm. not attached with a zip, just mm -hmm. to support the original canvas. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, now, the final part of a painting is the frame. Uh, can you? Uh, one of the uh, one of the things that, for example, in in India, uh, because uh, paintings is not a very long tradition, and conservation also does not have the same tradition that you have. Uh, uh, the how much importance do you put to the frame? How important is the frame and original frame? If, if it belongs to the, you know, in terms of 
even if it is not looking, you know, nowadays you get so many new frames and uh, curators sometimes want paintings to look with, with new frames. Uh, do you have a policy or? Yes, now uh, we have a very, very clear policy about the, the frames. Uh, we respect uh, in all the possible the original frames and never change it if it is not necessary or if the painting has an uh, old frame. The, the problem we have here in the Prado collection is we, uh, we don't have uh, ancient frames uh, on the 18th century. The, 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 the old frames we have, uh, we have are from 18th century because the Royal Collection was changed. Uh, and we, uh, the Royal Collection was in, in a building uh, uh, that was fire was was, was on fire, uh, and then in the, in the new palace, the, the new the, the king uh, made a new uh, uh, framing in general for all the paintings of the royal collection. So we don't have conserved, uh, unfortunately, the the old uh, the old uh, frames. So our original frames are from 18th uh, century. And these original frames are conserved now perfectly in, in most of the paintings of the collection. And we have an, a special uh, department for restoring the frames with three specialists and a, a person uh, destined to uh, conserve, to study, and to uh, a curator special for, uh, for frames that uh, is a restorer also. Uh, but she is uh, especially dedicated to the to the frames. Uh, when we need uh, to change uh, a frame, or, uh, because the painting has not, has a modern frame, for example, now we try to uh, look for uh, an old frame and adapt it to the to the painting. We have a warehouse with all, all frames without painting, <laughs> we, uh, and even. Uh, Mm -hmm. <laughs> all prices of the of the frames and we re reuse these frames for the for the paintings if we uh, have the luck to find uh, an old frame with the measures adequate uh, to the painting we need uh, to make a frame and, and, and it has to be said that uh, the the fact of the frames it was considered a fashion during the last 200 years since the museum opened. In every period, they considered that the, the, the best frame for the painting were uh, the, the ones who were on use in this moment. Now, the policy is the contrary. We try to find uh, a connection with the painting and the frame, uh, and the frame that it could have had in the past. So we try to uh, or reproduce, or find old frames for, for, mm -hmm. for, for our, our collection. So we, we, we have this is in, the, in the last 50 years, not 40 mm -hmm. years, we, we changed the, 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 the way the paintings mm -hmm. uh, can, must be seen. Uh, we, we consider that the age of the frame must be the same of the age of the painting mm -hmm. and a match them. In the 19th century collection, uh, we have a lot of original okay. frames. In the 19th century, yeah. yes, uh, even mm -hmm. in some cases, the, the frame was especially designed for the, the painting. painting. And it's yeah. very, very important to conserve uh, it. This is uh, an important issue for us uh, because uh, the, you know, the paintings are, uh, we have a lot of contemporary paintings, of course. And uh, people tend to change the artist's frame and put it into new sort of frame. And uh, there's already so much experience about, say, impressionist paintings where the original frames are changed into these gilded frames. And it is uh, it takes away from the painting. It takes away from the from the artist's conception, of course. So I think. Uh, you know, a policy where you're reverting back to uh, what would be an artist's frame or something which is period uh, specific or which is compatible in terms of period of time is really, really, really a good. And, and we, we, 
we, we really believe that the, the, the type of, of frames is not an election, aleatory election. So the painters decided what kind of frame was the best for the painting. And, uh, and many, in many cases, the frame helps to understand the painting or helps the viewer to, to get into the painting and in the mean of to help to or give information about the painting yeah. or really connect with the with the with the what the painting is telling us. So this is important to to keep it to keep keep it in and preserve it. Have, have, have you, uh, in terms of collection management, uh, started uh, a risk-based uh, approach or uh, uh, or is there, a, you know, uh, are you still managing the collection in the old way? Um, in terms of collection management, is the risk-based uh, sort of system that is being used uh, in some of the places where you evaluate the risk and then accordingly organize the uh, storage of your collection and all uh, that? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the Prado policy respect that is we, um, the collection is divided on sections. Okay. And in each section, there's a curator who cares about the the circumstances of the collection, so study the, the history of each painting and make a catalog of the paintings and, and, uh, and, and do the artistic studies of the painting. And uh, uh, each department with the curators organized with our, the, the head of the restoration department, uh, the policy of the restoration during, at the, at the beginning of the year, they decided which is going to be the painting who are going to be restored depending on the temporary exhibitions or whatever. So uh, we are really connected, we have a really connection in between the, our, our uh, chief restoration okay. department with the curators of the other departments. Okay. Um, I think we are running out of time and it's fantastic that we have had an opportunity to get a Small little, small little uh, vignette into what you are doing at Prada, which of course is such a fabulous place and such a fabulous museum. Uh, and, and thank Santa, you, Mr. Dahar. It's fantastic that we we all speak we 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 three speak on the same language of girls and, <laughs> and, yes. and criteria and material. So uh, the rest of yeah. the coming. Uh, war. Yes, in yeah. uh, a general war. way. Yes, yes. And in a general mm -hmm. way in the mm -hmm. world. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be taking some questions after this, uh, uh, whatever questions we have on the chat. And uh, I hope the people who joined us have had an opportunity to, uh, to look at the great work and the good work being done and the uh, progress and different new methods and new approaches with continuing with the tradition and going forward uh, with the new, uh, it's something to uh, incorporate. Uh, thank you very, very much. And uh, we'll have the question answers and then we get to do, uh, it's re really uh, the Benale has brought in a uh, lot of people together. So mm -hmm. thanks a lot. Thank you very much.